Now, look, this cry of Abba, Father, there's one more thing I want to say about this before we move on. And this is glorious to know. I saw something that I didn't see before about this cry of Abba, Father. I told you that that word Abba, which by the way, is of a sort of a Aramaic Syrian origin. I know there's an argument that it comes out of the Hebrew. I'm, I'm not going to debate that with anybody. But that word also means father. But it is a term of, yeah, it's a term of reverence and um, uh, affection and intimacy. What did you call your dad? I know you were close to your dad. What did you call your dad? Daddy. Daddy. Yeah. And um, he was your father. But if you ever called your dad father. He set me down. To talk. Okay. <laughs> okay. He set you down and talked to you. That would be a very formal, stiffer way. You know, yeah. father, may I go? That almost implies this uh, rigid, uh, almost, um, almost fearful relationship, you know. Or you might want to say that out of respect, but you, but you know, but you would always use that word. If you really wanted to get something, you know what you do? Yeah, you know what you did. Yeah. But you'd use that word daddy. Because to him, how did that make him feel? Yeah, like a giant. That's exactly. This is emphasizing a different aspect of the relationship. And that's a perfect way for me to say this because this, um, this part of the relationship is pictured right here. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. We know what that was. That was the law. That was the spirit of bondage. But you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Now a moment ago I read a verse where he says, He has sent the spirit of his Son into your hearts crying, Abba, Father. And now he's talking about us making the cry of Abba, Father. The cry of Abba Father is only made in one other place in the Scripture, and it's made by the Lord Jesus Christ at a very particular time in His life. And in order to see what I'm going to talk about here, I think it's important to see this. So what we're going to do, and I know the little buzzer went off, so I'm going to take the break here, but we're going to come back, and I need to pick this back up, because this is going to segue us right in to where we need to be in verse 16 in this next verse. But I'm going to show you something wonderful. I'll just say it to you and then we'll kind of expose it in the scripture. The Lord Jesus Christ. This is something I don't know if we've ever talked about it before. This is what makes me so excited about it. The Lord Jesus Christ had a twofold relationship with his Father. And because we have been baptized into Christ, we also have a twofold relationship with our Heavenly Father. And both aspects of that relationship are brought into being with that cry. That's why, because you would almost say, if Abba means Father, why say it twice? Out of your justification, He's your Father because you're a child of God. Child. But in sanctification, there is a more intimate relationship with Him that is now going to allow you to not just be a son, but to labor with Him in His business. You're going to be brought into an area that the other kids who weren't going to be part of the business aren't going to be brought into. I'm talking about in the earthly realm. Well, now in this realm, what you've got. And so, and so why does Jesus wait until he's about to go to the cross? Why at that time does he use this? That's very important. And that's what I want to show you when we come back. 
Because this is also going to shed light on something else that happened. Do you remember, and we'll look at the verses on this, but you remember when he's on the cross, he says something. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? It almost makes you wonder, why is he saying that twice? Why is he saying Father twice? But he's using one word that intimate that, that it's almost like that daddy term. It's almost like that more intimate term where you realize there's a, a special element to the relationship. I'm not saying that, you know, that as the... Look, you know what? This is him as the Son of God. But when he was here on this earth, he was educated. I'm going to show you this. He was educated and he learned as a son who was going to be laboring with his father out of what he had been taught. So there's a dual relationship going on here. And both of those, it's almost like he's saying, I recognize that I am your son because of the relationship that we have as father and son. But I also recognize that I have a decision to make. You could call this, this out of this one that he's going to make the sonship decision. Because something very difficult is taking place in his life. And that's when we find him making this cry of Abba Father. And then we'll tie that back into ours. That'll move us right into the inheritance. That was very astute to see that this is, because heir, heir of God, that's that, you know, He's our, fa he's, he's our Father. We're in, the, we're in the family. But when you get to join heirs, now you're in the business. 